So at the end of the last step, I asked you to show your teachers your code. Um, if you're in class, you should have been able to do that fine. If you are not currently in class, you may need to go to office hours uh, or uh, email your teacher and ask them where to find the, the code that you need for this next part. Uh, you're also welcome, I'm going to show the code on screen, you're welcome to try to copy it down. You can pause the video and, and copy it down, but I'm not gonna go over it too much because your teachers are, are going to explain this stuff in class. So um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my code that I've got here that you should get from your teachers and it's gonna be this fixed update method. Just quickly, I'm gonna go over a couple of things that your teachers may have touched on. Um, fixed update is just like update and that it's called once every frame, but unlike update, uh, fixed update always happens 60 times per second. Whether your computer runs that fast or not, a fixed update still always going to run at, at 60 frames per second. And that's because fixed update handles the physics in Unity. And you'll notice that inside the fixed update, we're doing some rigid body manipulation. And we do that inside fixed update because rigid bodies only move and do things on those 60 frames per second. So update might happen a lot faster than fixed update, but even if we put a rigid body, like a code of line of code in our update function that affected our rigid bodies, it would still only happen 60 times per second. So we just cut out the middleman and put this stuff inside our fixed update. What we now need to do is actually go back to our Unity scene here and select our ship. And what we need to do is assign a couple of variables um, inside that ship transform array. Um, so what we need to do is select the ship um, and we need to actually drag our ship script out onto our inspector here. Um, important to note, what you need to do is make sure that you save your script. After you add the code or before, as much as possible, remember to save your script. You can do that by clicking the little Save Assets button up here. You can also click the File menu and click Save Assets, or you can just hit Control or Command S. So you're gonna go ahead and, and save your script, and then what you're gonna do is, uh, like I said, go back to the Unity Editor, it's going to give you a little load time here. It's going to think for a second, and then you can drag the ship script out onto your inspector when you have the ship selected. What you then need to do is click the drop down arrow next to your sail transforms here, and you're going to set this to a size of six, um, which is a little bit more than I thought, but that's okay. Um, we're going to have six transforms in here, and what they're going to represent is our sails. So we're going to expand our ship by clicking the arrow next to it. You're going to click on here uh, inside the mass pivot front, and you're gonna grab object sail pivot three, four, and five. And each one, you're gonna drag them into a field. Make sure you don't drag them into the same field because you don't wanna overwrite them. You wanna have all of them fill these six. So three, four, and five will fill element zero, one, and two, excuse me. And then once you've got those three, you go to mass pivot back and you grab sail pivot six, seven, and eight. And once you've got that, you're, you, that's, that's great. That's what we need. So you'll hit control S and save your scene. And then you'll head back over to our ship script here. You can tab over or again, you can just open the ship script by double clicking it there. And we're gonna add a little bit more code back into that guy. So what we're gonna do is go down to the bottom here and we're going to type add some press enter a couple times give us some space we're going to type void on trigger enter and then our open and close parentheses now my computer and my visual studio and yours might do this as well has what's called intellisense and autocomplete so what that will do is if you if you type something that unity recognizes and knows what you're going to put it's going to fill it out for you i didn't even press a button it just added it now not everybody will have intellisense and stuff set up so it's just important that you just write this out as it's seen here with this collider dot other inside your two open and close parentheses and then those open and close curly brackets after that um, inside those two open and close curly brackets we're going to write if which is a conditional statement uh, it's looking for a Boolean value. So we're gonna give it a Boolean value that says it's true if other.tag is equal to water and two and signs here, we are not 
exclamation point means not floating, which is that Boolean variable we started up here. We're going to have if not floating, and then again we need our open and close curly brackets. We're going to say C level is equal to other dot transform dot position dot y. So that's going to give us the, the y position of our water, which is what we want. And we're going to say plus, and then inside two open and close parentheses, we're going to say other dot transform dot local scale dot y. And we're going to use a divide sign. We're going to say that divided by two. And the reason for that is we want to get the, the position in space, the, the y position, and then our object is, the height of our object is this local scale dot y. But if we add that to the where our object is located in world space, we're actually going to be twice as high because, you know, instead of going from the bottom all the way to the top of our object, we're going from the middle past the top of our object. So we, we decide to divide it by two to make sure we line up with the top of our water. And then we're going to say floating is equal to true. So now what that'll do is tell our fixed update code to run the math to make our boat float. Next up, we need to do another on trigger method, but this time it's going to be private void on trigger exit. And then we need those open and close parentheses, same as before, we need collider.other and those open and close brackets. Your computer may auto fill it out for you just like mine did and that's okay. Um, and then we need another conditional. We're going to say if other dot tag equals to water and make sure we're using our capital W here. Um, and we're going to add our open and close brackets. So we're going to say floating equals false. Now the last thing we need to do before we move on to the next step is go back over to Unity once more and select our water. So you can click on it in the world or just click the water object here. And we're going to go to the tag option at the top. And at the bottom, when you click that, it'll say add tag. So click on that, click the plus sign, and it'll say new tag name. You're gonna type water and hit enter, and it's gonna pop up here. Uh, yours will probably be at the top, it'll say tag zero. If it does say tag one, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, as long as the tag is listed under this tags thing, then you're good. Um, then you need to go back to the water and click on the tag drop down here again and now you'll see the water option is there if you click on that your water will now be tagged and your ship will now float